For Krumah Media's Policy, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled Communism and Ethics. Why did you write this article and what did you hope to achieve? Someone was asking me, am I still a communist? When I started to try to answer the question, I realized it raises broad ethical questions that affect ethical conduct in South Africa. And it also explains why I broke from the ANC and the SACP. And what I believe is a very important thing for people to debate or agree with or to incorporate in their conduct is that ethical conduct is not simply to agree with some doctrine or to agree with what is written in some program or book or policy. Ethical conduct is not just understanding, it's also to act with compassion and passion in the interests of the poor. So when I broke with the ANC and the SACP, I didn't break with my beliefs. I broke for the same reason as I joined the ANC and the SACP, to advance the cause of the poor. Because they had turned their back on the poor and also their conduct in the Zuma rape trial, which was to pummel a vulnerable person, because they conducted themselves in a way which is repugnant to the reasons why I joined, I had to leave. And I believe that those people who still believe in the communism of Chris Hani, the communism of Walter Sassoon and Nelson Mandela, who later became identified as communist, Moses Kotane, Yusuf Dadu, Alex Laguma, people like this. If they believe in that communism, it's not at the fundamental question, isn't what Marx said or Lenin said, but whether you act out certain ways of conduct where you care for your fellow human being. And in that article, I quote an interview that I did with Dupur Velase on Chris Hani. And it explains how Chris Hani cared about every soldier. And that carried on into everyday life. So that was why I wrote it. I wrote it because I was challenged to answer the question. But the way I answer the question is to open up another question, which is commitment to a cause is not just doctrine. It's how you conduct yourself, whether you conduct yourself in a way that harms people or helps them. And you seem to still be ambiguous about communism, still feeling you belong there? Well, I can't say that I renounce the reasons why I became a communist. Uh, although I think there's some things in communism which have to be thrown out from the Soviet experience or rethought. But my communism was not primarily about doctrine. As I said, it was primarily about what I believed. And I can't then say I'm definitely not a communist. I'm definitely not a member of the SACP. I find it a repugnant organization by the way it has conducted itself during the Zuma period. Even today, I'm not very impressed with the way they conduct themselves. However, what does it mean for me? Can you be a communist if you're not a member of the Communist Party? I was told you couldn't be when I joined, but I think that's wrong. I think you can be an independent communist, but I'm not driven to identify with that. What I'm driven to identify with now is having a relationship with people where I care about harm that's done to them, the pain that they feel. I must make it my own, and that's why I joined, and that's why I left as well, and that's why I continue to write about it. And why is feminism so important in your critique of ethics in the SACP, and it seems also in the ANC? My reading of feminism has been intensified over 
the period since I left uh, the organizations. But I was already reading before then. And I find in trying to answer what it means to betray a struggle and what you have to answer what it means to join and be committed to a struggle. And I find found in feminist theology, they have ways of understanding that I found very helpful. They talk about a connection, mutuality, interrelatedness between yourself and other people. And in the case of a freedom fighter, and I believe we must reintroduce that word and give it its proper meaning of helping to emancipate people. Now, if you are a freedom fighter, you join your life with that of the oppressed. You join your life with achieving freedom for all. That is, is what your life entails. And you prepare yourself for arrest, torture, and death. Nowadays, they prepare themselves for a lot of eating of things that do not belong to them. And what the rater revealed is well known. It's not something they're outraged about. And they get in Balula to make huge statements about it. It's not convincing. Um, so what I'm saying is the feminists help me to understand what it means to commit yourself is to put your body on the line. But you don't always have to die. You just have to do more than intellectually commit yourself. And to betray is to siphon off funds that are meant for the poor towards yourself or your comrades. That is betrayal. And I got that from working with categories from feminist theology and feminist ethics like care, uh, which is also care, compassion, empathy, all these words, and breaking them down and applying it. And lastly, Raymond, what are you arguing about the meaning of commitment and freedom fighter? With commitment, it doesn't have one meaning. It depends on what you are doing. If you join the bowling club, your commitment is to pay your membership fees, to contribute if they say that the bowling green needs to be re, um, the grass needs to be changed or something, you contribute to it. But if you contribute to a struggle, if it's a time of peace and it's not under an authoritarian regime, well, then you commit yourself to doing certain tasks and you have to carry those out in good faith. In the time of the apartheid regime, we had to commit ourselves to something where danger was involved, where we knew there was a very good chance of injury or losing our lives or being locked up. And a lot of people lost their lives for this. Being a freedom fighter, I think, is, a, is important to redefine. It's someone who commits themselves to a version of freedom that is inclusive, that incorporates all the marginalized, that listens and learns and advances the program and acts to realize that program by putting their body on the line if necessary, but it may not be necessary. So we need to rethink it and there's nothing, some people think it's a cliche, but I think it's a very worthy word, just as I think the word comrade, the rater is wrong, the word comrade must be understood as referring to tight companionship in difficult conditions, but not always in difficult conditions, but it's used not just by Marxists and people like that, so the rater is wrong on that, and on Lumpen proletariat, but that's a separate question. That was Professor Raymond Satna speaking to Criminal Media's Polity about communism and ethics.